My name is Jerome Kim. I'm the Director General of the International Vaccine Institute located in Seoul, South Korea. IVI has a vision of developing countries free from infectious diseases and a mission to discover, develop, and deliver safe, effective, and affordable vaccines for global health. We are engaged in the COVID-19 uh, vaccine development effort uh, with multiple companies uh, with a view to try to accelerate vaccine development in any way we can in order to get to a protective and safe COVID-19 vaccine as quickly as possible. Could you tell us a little about this partnership and how important this partnership is for the development of vaccines? Yes, and the Korean government also agreed to join CEPI, which I think mm -hmm. is a, a really important step forward. Because when we're dealing with a pandemic like this, we, we sometimes have to remember that this is not a you know, a race for you by U.S. companies or a race by, by um, European companies or Chinese companies. <clears throat> this is a race to get a vaccine that will be safe and effective at preventing transmission of SARS-CoV-2 to other people. And, and when we succeed, and hopefully we will succeed with more than one vaccine, then the world will be uh, fully armed. We succeed best in this kind of thing when we work together. And, and I think probably... CEPI is the best example of this because the 13 countries that have joined CEPI and contribute to it, the Gates Foundation, the Wellcome Trust, uh, the European Union, all believe that <clears throat> we are stronger and faster when we work together than when we work separately. And when we consider the needs of, of everyone rather than the needs of, of a few. And how will this work? Well, it meant that, you know, when very shortly after the Chinese published the sequence uh, for SARS-CoV-2, CEPI put out a call for proposals. Anybody send us um, a proposal for vaccine development if you think you can get the vaccine out in four months. From the very beginnings in the lab to first testing in humans in four months. And four companies, actually three companies and a university said, you know, raised their hand and, and were funded. And you know, at least two of those companies now actually have products entering the second stage of testing. And we are just four and a half months into the uh, epidemic. So for vaccine development, that's extraordinary speed. And it speaks to how CEPI can use the tools that it's developed for other outbreak diseases like, SAR, like MERS or um, Lassa fever or Nipah um, virus disease and, and extend them very quickly to an unknown disease, in this case, um, COVID-19. And very effectively get companies to get started by funding them and then put funding in place that, and put uh, legal documents in place that will guarantee access. We have three big tasks. The first is to prove the vaccine works, or hopefully prove that more than one vaccine works, mm -hmm. um, to make those vaccines in significant quantities with high quality, and then use those vaccines, distributing the vaccines across the world um, in a prioritized manner that allows eventually everyone to be vaccinated who needs to be vaccinated, but really allows access and equity uh, to countries around the world. I mean, because not every country has vaccine industries. I mean, Korea is very fortunate in that it has a very strong uh, and modern vaccine industry, but not all countries have this advantage. And so by joining CEPI, everyone has the opportunity to participate in vaccine development and potentially to benefit from it. So I think CEPI really is the model, the paradigm w w of what we should look for with these outbreak diseases. Mm -hmm. So it, it sounds like international cooperation is key to uh, the, the race for a vaccine. Uh, could you tell us uh, how many vaccines are being developed currently? Uh, I th lost count. It's over 100. <laughs> no, actually, it's probably right now closer to 150. Mm -hmm. But it really depends on how, uh, what you consider development. So. You know, there are eight vaccines that are actually being tested in humans. Mm -hmm. And although vaccines are in phase one and phase two, right now only one company has so far reported results. Mm -hmm. uh, actually, no, I take that back. Now two companies have reported results. Um, and have shown that the, that the vaccines that are in question actually generate the correct protective responses. Um, they generate infection-fighting proteins called antibodies, and they generate some aspect of the kinds of... Um, cells that help to fight against infection. So it sounds like we have a long way to go, stage one, two, three, all the testing. <laughs> Is 12 to 18 months an accurate estimate? Because you know the way I've heard it, it usually takes between five to 10 years. 
How, right. how is it possible that we can expedite this process so much? So five to 10 years assumes that things are moving uh, one after the other. So you do phase one, you do phase two and phase three, and it also includes some time to go back and fix things. Mm -hmm. If you don't see exactly what you want, or if you're a company, and you want to make a vaccine and have a regimen that will be precisely tuned, that will be the right dose, uh, given the right number of times, because you know the more expensive a vaccine, or you may need to go back and remake it mm -hmm. uh, in order to be better at uh, preparing a large quantity of the, the vaccine. So you spend some time optimizing. And in this case, though, we're going to overlap them. Mm -hmm. And so phase one will start. Phase two will start while phase one is still running. And phase three will probably start while phase two is still running. What we will know is that the vaccine generates the right protective responses. And we will be collecting you know, safety information through all of the trials. So we'll be you know, increasing actually tremendously the amount of safety information we have. But by the end of phase three, and we could have a result you know, maybe 12 months from now, um, we will know that the vaccine protects against infection and, and is safe up to the point where we've looked, which is 12 months. Um, we will continue probably to collect safety information after that mm. uh, because it's, it's absolutely required to prove that a vaccine is safe. But it's important to know that the vaccine works. As a, a vaccine expert, I've, I'm sure you've you know, seen uh, the development of vaccines for you know, HIV, for, for MERS, various uh, infectious diseases. Uh, in your uh, opinion, how, how will COVID-19 end? Will it end soon? Uh, so I think for COVID-19, mm -hmm. I, I believe that we will have a vaccine. Uh, and I, and I, the reason I say that is I think it will be easier than HIV. Mm -hmm. And remember, we've been working on an HIV vaccine since 1984, 1985, and we haven't, I mean, we've had a couple of um, glimmers of hope, but right now uh, there isn't anything. Um, and it's been a long time. Mm -hmm. I think COVID-19 may be slightly easier to develop a vaccine for overall. Mm -hmm. um, and the reason is that uh, with a typical vaccine, so say one for uh, uh, hepatitis A, as an example, when a person gets infected with hepatitis A, the body's defensive reaction against the virus eventually controls the virus and then eliminates it. And not only that, but it protects a person against future infection. So you're immune to future infection. Um, the, with a difficult to develop vaccine, like one for tuberculosis or HIV, you don't get that same protective immune response. The immune response for HIV manages to control it, but never manages to get rid of it. And we know that you can be reinfected. Even though you have HIV, a, another strain can come in and infect you. With COVID, we think that when you have a COVID-19 infection, the, the protective response, the infection-fighting proteins and the killer cells, manage to eliminate the infection and prevent reinfection. We're not absolutely sure, but there's some data that would suggest that that's true, for instance, in monkeys. So if you um, expose a monkey to COVID-19 infection, it is immune from, from being infected again. There's some data from humans, for instance, the, uh, you know, um, the Korean government has done some studies to see uh, at this, they were looking at the reinfection question. Mm -hmm. And it looks like people weren't in fact uh, able to transmit after that. So they're assuming that it's not true reinfection. Um, so maybe people are protected. And that would be pretty good evidence that we can develop a vaccine that does the same thing, that the vaccine will develop the same infection fighting proteins and killer cells that the body develops in order to control and defeat an infection and that will protect people. So I think COVID-19 might be an easier target. Mm -hmm. I don't know about 12 to 18 months, mm -hmm. but I think that we will have a vaccine.